First head over to Edit menu on the top left, and then Preferences. I'll increase the resolution to 1.1, so you can see better. Then select System, and under Memory and Limits, set the Undo steps to a higher value. That'll help you to use the Undo button that many times. Then click on the three-lined menu at the bottom left, and select Save Preferences. Now head over to the Gizmos drop-down, and turn on Move Tool. By left-click dragging the arrows, you can move the selected object. The color represents the axis. Red, green, and blue for X, Y, and Z respectively. Right-clicking on the status bar will bring a pop-up menu. I like to turn on scene statistics and system memory as well. Now if you don't want to repeat the changes every time you open Blender, you can go to File. Under Defaults, select Save Startup File. You don't have to worry though, since you can always load back the factory settings. Pressing the middle mouse button will let you orbit in the scene. Shift plus middle mouse button will pan the scene. And scrolling the mouse wheel will zoom in or zoom out. Left clicking on objects will select them. Dragging over the objects also selects them. We will first select the light and delete it by pressing X, then selecting delete. Also move the cube up. Now press Shift plus A, and under Mesh, select Cylinder to add it in the scene. Then in the Operator panel, change the number of vertices to 8. Now switch to Front View, and then press Tab to enter Edit Mode of the object. Move it up so it sits on the XY plane. Press S to scale, and then Shift plus Z, so it won't scale down in Z axis. Now with Ctrl plus R, add some loop cuts. Scrolling the mouse wheel will increase the segments. Then with Alt plus Z, switch to X-ray view so we can even select the parts which we can't see directly. Select the bottom vertices, and then press O to turn on proportional tool. And then S to scale it up. Adjust the influence with mouse wheel. Now select the middle vertices and drag them to the right. Also maybe slide it by pressing G twice. Turn on face selection with 3. And select the bottom and top faces. Press I to inset them. And then back in object mode, bring down the cube. Control plus 2 to add subdivision surface modifier, and then in edit mode, switch to X-ray view. Select the bottom face, and inset it. Inset it again, and move that up. And then maybe extrude it up with EE. To give the cap a bit more organic shape, press Shift plus A, and add a lattice. Scale and position the lattice so as to cover the cap completely. Then select the cap, and then the lattice, so the lattice is the active one. Press Ctrl plus P, and select Lattice Deform. Now the cap will get affected, if you tweak the points of the lattice in its edit mode. Also, you can add more points to it in the lattice properties. Now, select both the lattice and the stem, with stem selected at last so it's the active one. Press Ctrl P, and select Object to parent it. Let's also rename it as Mushroom. Then with both selected, right-click, and select Shade Smooth. Now, to create the white spots on the cap, add a cylinder. In the Operator panel, set the vertices to 8, and then Ctrl 2 to add a Subsurf modifier. Scale it down in Edit Mode, and then maybe also scale it down on Z axis. Select top and bottom faces, and press I to inset them. Then shade it smooth in object mode. And then turn on snapping. Under the drop-down, select faces and mark a line rotation to target. Now if you move it with G, it'll stick to the surface. Then use Alt plus D to duplicate and S to scale down. I am using Alt plus D to duplicate because if we need to make changes to the spots later on, we just have to do it to any one of them. Others will copy it. So after you are done, turn off the snapping. And if some of them are still sticking out, drag them manually and maybe rotate them a bit. Press R twice to rotate it freely. Now I want them to be part of the mushroom, so we need to parent. But instead of selecting them with Shift and left click, which will take more time, we can select any one of them. And then press Shift plus L, and select Object Data. Then Shift select the mushroom, press Ctrl P, and select Object to parent. Now select all of them, and press Shift plus D to duplicate. Scale down the new one, and maybe rotate it a bit to look a bit different. Now press Shift plus S, and select Cursor to World Origin. It'll bring back the 3D cursor back to World Origin. So when we add a new object such as a cube, it starts from the World Origin. Add a Subsurf modifier to it, and then in Edit Mode, scale it up, and bring it down. Select the top face, and inset it. 
Then with X-ray enabled, select the bottom face and move it up. Select the top vertices and scale it up. Then add a loop cut at the center and scale that as well. Now for the grass, add a curve path. Rotate at 90 degrees. Then head over to Curve Properties and under Geometry Settings and Bevel, increase the depth. Also lower down the resolution. Then in Edit Mode, with everything selected, move it up so the origin point is at the bottom. Then back in Object Mode, bring it down. Now move the points left or right in Edit Mode. And then after selecting the top point, press Alt plus S to scale it down. You can also close the caps if you want to. Now duplicate it with Alt plus D, and then scale it down, as well as rotate. Now duplicate with Shift plus D, and scale it down. Switch to top view, and duplicate it three more times. Select four of them, and then press Ctrl plus J to join them. Alt plus D to duplicate, and Shift plus Z to restrict movement on Z axis. Now to create a rock, add a cube. Scale it down and then add a subsurf modifier in object mode. In the modifier properties, apply the modifier. Then in edit mode, enter vertex selection with 1, and press O to enable proportional tool. Tweak the vertices and adjust the influence with mouse wheel. Duplicate and scale down to create variations. And then duplicate again to create some more patch of rocks. Rename the ground with F2 and then select all the rocks with Shift plus L in object data. Press M to move them to a new collection. Also select the grasses and move them to a new collection. Now in the scene collection, add a new cylinder with 8 vertices for the bottle. Add a subsurf modifier to it. Then in edit mode, enter X-ray view and try to create a shape of a bottle by scaling the faces and by extruding them with EE. Delete the top face by pressing X and select Face. Introduce a new loop cut if necessary. Then to add thickness to the bottle, add a solidify modifier in object mode. Increase the thickness, and since we want the subdivision to happen after the solidify, bring down the subsurf modifier by dragging the corner. Then apply the solidify modifier. Then in edit mode with face selection turned on, alt left click on the top face to select the face loop. The weight of the cursor needs to be more towards the vertical edge to select the horizontal loop. Then press alt plus E, and select extrude along normals. If you select the second option in the subsurf modifier, it'll disable the modifier in edit mode. Now select another face loop, and extrude that along the normal as well. Add some support loops with Ctrl R. Then to create the cork, enter vertex selection with 1, and then Alt left click on one of the top vertices to select the loop. Then Shift plus D to duplicate, right click to snap it back to its original place. And then press P, and select selection to separate it from the bottle. Now select the new circle in object mode, and then in its edit mode, press F to fill it. Move it up, and then extrude it down with EE. Add some loop cuts to create a cork shape. And then inset the top face. You can rename them in object mode. Then parent them with Ctrl P. Now for the backdrop, add a plane. Then in edit mode, scale it up. Enter edge selection with 2, and then select the edge at the back. Extrude it up. Then in object mode, add a bevel modifier to it. Increase the amount, and then number of segments. Also shade it smooth. With the plane selected, if you press Ctrl plus I, it'll invert the selection. Move everything up so the bottle sits on top of the plane. Then to align the camera to the current view, press Ctrl, Alt, and 0 on the numpad. Now head over to output properties and change the resolution. Then with camera selected, press G to move it. And if you click the middle mouse button after G, you can zoom in or out as well. Before moving ahead, we'll split the viewport. So to do that, take the cursor near the boundary, and right click to bring a pop-up menu. Select vertical split, and then left click to make the split. Now with cursor on the first viewport, press T to hide the toolbar. 
and scroll on the top menu to see the right side menus. Then hide the gizmos as well. Switch this viewport to rendered view. Then head over to world properties and lower down the color value. Then add an area light into the scene. Move it up and then in light properties, increase the strength and increase the size. In the render properties, change the render engine to cycles for better results. And lower down the viewport sampling for faster rendering. Select the bottle and head over to material properties. Under surface, select glass. Lower down the roughness and change the IOR value to 1.5. Now switch to side view and move the light a bit to the right so it doesn't cast light directly from the top. Change the pivot point to 3D cursor and then rotate it a bit. And from the top view, duplicate the light two more times. And finally, from the front view rotate the lights again. Now in the first viewport, press Ctrl plus B and drag over the camera. This'll tell Blender to render only that region meaning faster viewport render. Now actually, let's increase the strength of our lights. Your scene might require different values. So try different values and see what works best. Now let's add a material to the backdrop. Then to the cork in the same way. We cannot see the mushrooms or grass due to the bottle. So select the bottle and press H to hide it for now. Now it's easier to select our models and add materials to them. When we add material to one of the grass patches, all the others get affected too. This is because we used Alt plus D to duplicate them before. And to assign the same material to big grass, you can select the grass material from the drop down. For the ground instead of adding two simple material, let's try something different. Click on shading on top to switch to shading workspace. You can get rid of the unwanted editor by right clicking on the boundary and selecting join areas. Then left click on the left side editor. Click on new to add new material. Middle click to move the view. Then head over to add menu. And then under converter, select color ramp. Then under texture, select gradient texture. Plug the color to factor and then color to base color. You can drag the color on the color ramp to tell Blender how much of it you want. Clicking on the plus button will add more colors. You can choose a lighter one here. Now the problem here is that the gradient is happening horizontally, but I want it to happen vertically. So under Vector, select Mapping. And then under Input, select Texture Coordinate. Plug the generated to Vector, and then Vector to Vector. And change the Y rotation to 90 degrees. If you change the interpolation from linear to constant, you'll see the colors more clearly. Now switch back to Layout Workspace and press Alt plus H to unhide the bottle. Adjust the size of the bottle or the ground if required. Now to make the colors pop a bit more, head over to Render Properties. Scroll down, and under Color Management, change the View Transform to Standard, and then set the look to very high contrast. Now if you don't like these light reflections on the glass here, select the light. Then head over to Object Properties, and then under Ray Visibility, turn off Glossy and Reflections. Now let's add some stars in the background. So add a plane, and in the Operator panel, set the alignment to View. Then in Edit Mode, right-click and select Subdivide. Then select the corner vertices and scale them out to create a star shape. Now add a circle. In the operator panel, set alignment to view and fill type to Ngon. Scale it down and position it. Then in the material properties, add emission material to it. Set the strength to 3. Now we'll add some depth of field to the camera. So first by pressing Shift plus S, set the cursor to World Origin. Then add an empty, doesn't matter which. It won't be visible in your final render. Then with the camera selected, head over to Camera Properties. 
and turn on depth of field. With the picker tool, select the empty for the focus object. And then decrease the f-stop value. Now if you duplicate the circle, and bring it near the camera, you can get a blurry effect. It has to be very tiny, and very near the camera. I just discovered this trick recently, thought I should share this with you. Now to decrease the render time, change the device to GPU if you have one. If the region gets grayed out, that means something is wrong. So head over to edit. Then preferences and under system, enable whatever GPU you see. If you don't see anything here, you'll have to depend just on your CPU. Another thing you can do is lower down the sampling. This will affect the render quality, but it won't matter that much if you'll only share it on Instagram or Twitter. Now you can head over to render menu and select render image. You might have to wait for some time to let it finish. Once the rendering is done, select image and save as. Name the image and save it. And don't forget to save the project file before exiting Blender. That should do it for today's video. Share your result with me on Insta or Twitter. I would love to see it. Thanks for watching. And a very special thanks to my amazing patrons for supporting me.